it hasn't been that long since a madman came to Lafayette and went to our movie theater. You know, you don't know how proud I am to serve with these officers and, and lead this department, a department that now is sought after by agencies across the country for us to come teach them how we handled that situation because they did it so well. We, this state decided in 1962 to give our firemen a 2% raise every year, but the police were left out. It just doesn't make any sense to me. And so I don't believe that it's the, I don't believe it's the best package. I don't believe that it's going to answer all of our issues, but I think it's the best thing we can come forward with right now. And that's why I came forward with it now. And look, I'll agree with you, and I'm like you, I'm still a little dumbfounded that when it happened, when they were doing the fire, for why the police weren't included at that right. time. I, I tried to dig into it, can't find anything why that was not done. I, I, I have no clue. Um, I guess a good question, my final question, what happens if this passes, passes at this state, but you guys, um, the police or the trigger does not go into effect for three or four years? Well. Uh, you know, it, this is what we came up with. We, we felt like it was fair. We do understand that the economy is what it is. We do want to be fair to the city. Um, you know, we are looking towards the future, you know, and, and I believe the economy will get better, and I think it will get better soon. So I'm optimistic. But we will all, I mean, we've chosen to live with what we have, and, and that's, you know, that's, that's where we are. We, we're hoping for the best, but it is what it is, right? Uh, we've seen signs of an economic pickup here as of late, and we're hopeful that's going to continue. Okay. One final question. Thank you, Chief. Uh, Ms. Toops, one final question. Uh, in the event, say, uh, city parish government, uh, whatever council it is, um, does an across-the-board pay raise, including firemen, police, or whoever, if the trigger is met with that year, would they get a 2% or a 4% raise? The council would be able to determine what they want to give in any particular year. If they see the desire to give the police department in limited at the two, as long as everybody else is not getting more than two, then I believe they would get the two. But you could say, well, we're going to give the police department four, and if that passes civil service rules, then there would be no problem with the police department getting four and the rest of the employees getting two. It would just depend upon what the, what the governing board at that time wanted to give. But it, it doesn't mean that they would just automatically be assumed to double up. Right now, when it, what we've done in the past since I've been in here, when we've included an across the board raise in the budget, we have said for the fire department, that the mandated state 2% raise is included in this number. So the fire department has not doubled up in years that we gave an across the board raise. The only times they would have had a different raise would have been in years where a new pay plan was adopted. That's what I was trying to get at. You made my point very much. That's all I have, sir. Thank you. Ms. Toops, I have a question for you. When we're talking about general fund money, how much money in last year's budget did we, this council take out of general fund money? Wasn't it over $10 million in different projects? Over $10 million? No. Uh, no, sir. How much you think? Um, in the use of general fund balance, can I just open my budget book? Yeah. <laughs> While you're doing that, I'll give the floor to Councilman Cole. Well, actually, Mr. Billard, that was along the lines that I was going to question. Your mic's hot. We're both on. I do want to make a point is that we in the city of Lafayette pay a little over 17 mills in property tax for law enforcement. Am I correct in that? That's on a different page in the budget book. <laughs> and then, of course, the bulk of the compensation for police and fire comes out of the general fund, and that goes to the question that, that you were asking. So I'll just leave it be at that for the moment. Eight point, eight point one eight, and that is fire and police together, because some of the millages are 
joined. Yeah, that was the millage answer. I'm sorry. General, the use of general fund balance, I see where you're getting your $10 million from. That was for two years in a row. It, it's adding up to almost $10 million. But, it, but for the current year, it is 4.7. Okay, thank you. Mr. Nakia. Just so I understand, and I'm trying to grab everything here just to be, make sure. In the event this passes or fails, I'm sure we're going to get back together and figure something out. But if it passes, what I'm reading is if we don't have the funding and the sales tax revenue is not there, we or the city is not obligated to go ahead and pay that. Is that correct? Right? Okay. Let's say we're in a year that they qualify and LCG employees as a whole is eligible for 2%. Can this council say, police department, you, because the sales tax was there, you got what, what was state mandated, but the other 2%, if we do any raises, would go to the other employees and we can carve out the police department? Yes, that is what's commonly done with the fire department right now. Okay. That's my understanding. Um, I mean, I don't, I don't want to leave a burden on the city or nothing else, I, I, but I'm, I'm looking at it, and it looks, looks very fair to me. I mean, if the money's there, it's there. If it's not, it's not. But if we're going to give a raise to the employees in the future, it, I want the police department to understand that just because if they get two, I, I'm not in favor of four. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, if, if, if you hit the numbers and sales tax revenue was there and the police department got what was proposed here, I don't want them assuming that you get that plus you get another two along with the other employees. Like that's where my limit cuts off. Right. There was no assumption of that. Okay. I just want because you know we start with one thing and then next thing you know I'm gonna have the fire department back here and then it's gonna be this escalating thing. So I respect everybody's comments and and I think Boudreaux and everybody else that might be for it or against it, we all have valid points. I'm just trying to comprehend the thought process and the facts that are on the table. Um, Okay, that's, that's the only question I have. Thank you. Okay, um, I, I can say for me only I will be supporting this. Um, I do like the trigger mechanism. I do like the fact that, you know, you, you're willing to only do it if the economy's good. Um, I really haven't seen that done before, so I want to applaud y'all for coming up with that uh, idea. I, I will definitely support it, and I don't see why anyone wouldn't. And if it's because maybe that it's not done by ordinance, maybe we can do it by ordinance to get the state out of it, if that's it. That way the previous council isn't on a hook. They go revise the ordinance, do whatever they want to do to it. Just like any ordinance previous councils have passed before, we can change it. We're the council, we're the legislative body. So maybe if that's a stigma or, or a sticking point with certain council members, let's come do it by ordinance don't need the state to do it we don't need them I totally agree with that and maybe that's a conversation you would have with our colleagues but as far as holding other council members in the future hostage that would that that'll be done with via ordinance and if you don't like an ordinance you repeal it you do whatever you get the votes to do it so I will be supporting this and that's just a suggestion that I wanted to throw out there councilman not I kind of like your suggestion I was just wondering if anybody else had the uh, same opinion of getting the state out of it like it I do. I mean, I think I think it's kind of like my same vote on the, going to Attorney General. I don't think we need the state involved in that one. I think we got it good here, so I'd like to keep it here locally with a uh, with an ordinance and get the get the state. But I do like your your uh, your thought process. I just don't know where the rest is at. Gotcha. But I and I don't think I, we can. I, I don't know if we we can go. I guess there I can I can kill it with uh, making an amendment to this resolution and making it an ordinance. No, or we got to defer it. Sean, a new ordinance. Oh, okay. Never mind. Well, that's, oh, oh, wait, hang on. I'm sorry. I cut you off. Oh, good. I accidentally yeah. cut you off. Mayor President Robodo. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I've uh, had conversations with the legislative delegation. They certainly, um, as, as Mr. Boudreaux mentioned, and I think everyone on the council, they support the law enforcement folks. But if, if the resolution 
is not going to have overwhelming support and there's a divided council on whether or not we want the state uh, to provide this symbolic gesture to the police that we are so behind you we're telling you we're giving you a two percent raise if this trigger mechanism hits then certainly the fallback um, measure I would suggest be that y'all consider doing an ordinance uh, yourself because the legislators will have some difficulty because their districts are different than your districts and and if it's a 5-4 type of vote then I would I would um, assume the legislature would say y'all go figure out what y'all want to do um, don't don't put us in the middle of, of your fight and so um, I just wanted to let you know that I've had those discussions uh, with the delegation they certainly want to support this and which is why they asked for chief to bring an ordinance a resolution so that the council could weigh in to show their support for this initiative and if the council shows their support then they're all gonna gonna run with it if not then I think the the, the solution that Naka and Bellard have brought up um, and just saying look let's keep it in-house and do it ourselves is, is is an important option because at the end of the day you know again it, it, we all know the the debate that occurred over the raises when we were losing money um, that we we found a way to still give those raises um, I applaud chief in the department for saying look we're not even asking unless there's gonna we know there's gonna be money the one thing that wasn't mentioned was the additional property taxes that typically come if sales taxes are up property values are going up and there's a little uh, money there but as much as anything it's it's a symbolic gesture to the to the, the police offices of Lafayette City Police that we want to two percent it's not a big amount but we want you to know that at any point in time that there is revenue increase we're willing to give you those raises if we're going to give them across the board then you're going to get your across the board raise and this won't factor in um, but if the economy is not good then, then you don't have to give it so I wanted to let you know more than anything about my conversation with the delegation and because this is a resolution it's an odd situation that you're putting them in if it's not uh, unanimous or close to unanimous thank you sir um, mr. Escott I'd like to uh, go forward with the ordinance and ask any other council members to join in as co-authors on something similar to this resolution for the future I can't kill this resolution maybe someone else can and we could do it by ordinance thank you for the next meeting or whenever V you have to schedule councilman call and mr. Robodeau uh, the term a symbolic gesture is of concern to me this would be a state mandate this is well beyond a symbolic gesture we would be committed to this by the state for all the future in terms of providing for compensation I am actually this is gonna be a scary night uh, with uh, mr. knock and mr. Bellard and I agreeing on the same issue but I think that we need to go <laughs> yes you check my head yeah <laughs> we need to do it locally if the legislature moves forward on our resolution tonight then we are committed to it and I would prefer to have that decision made locally and I don't think there's anyone in this council that doesn't recognize the need for compensating our police and fire personnel at a higher level at perhaps the highest in the state but I just don't see as this is the way to do it we need to do it locally have control locally as we move forward councilman Boudreaux thank you um, I had indicated that I was going to if, if this was to be considered do a um, offer an amendment to ask for one percent from the state and I was told that um, you could forget that the state don't have any money already but since I'm hearing all of this enthusiasm from the mayor president and this entire body <coughs> not now I think we're where we need to be are ten of us committed to if you love your police department as I've heard here today if you really love your police department are you willing the ten of us to go forth with a public safety revenue initiative for police and fire and put this to sleep see the, the thing that I'm saying is this is a band-aid this this thing could be out of whack 
easily in three years. If, the, if they don't get it, if it doesn't happen, the changes that's going to take place within the department, we have, and, and man, those of us who've been here know the only way you could address a department of rank and file, that's the uniqueness of police and fire. It's not like other departments where it's just pure classes. This is about rank and file. This is about time on the job. The only way you could do that, the reason they are the lowest paid as opposed to where we committed to for quite some time to keep them forth in the state as a municipality is because it changes so often. So since we're feeling so good, let's do the right thing. Let's all bind together and go forth with a public safety revenue initiative to get all the money needed to make sure that we never have this issue again. Are we just, you know, really painting these beautiful pictures between now and October? See, that, that's, we, we, and, 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 I, and I shared this with Chief in my office. We're, we're playing with, with these members' livelihood, and we dangling this 2%. If it hits 3%, this if, maybe, what? And we're feeling good about that. Well, if you really want to feel good, have the courage to get on the record right now and say, let's pursue it unless we really love our department. Otherwise, you know, the dog and pony tonight is fine and dandy, but y'all already know that's not the answer. That's the same things we suffer with these departments ever since we got here. So, you know, it is what it is, and cheap, that's what I didn't want to subject the department to. It's that carry. It's not the real answer, and that's why I, I don't. I, if, and we hearing it. We, I'm hearing all this kumbaya in right here. But sure. <laughs> let's do something it, really it sound, significant. It sounds good to me, yeah, Mr. Pedro. <laughs> let's do something really significant, and that's when we say, "Well, we can't do that." You see, because this, oh, you know, I, I, you know, I, I, I own it. You only asking for it when the revenue is there. The, the finance person then explained how the revenue works. If it's there one year, it continues even when it's not there. You don't, it don't, they don't say, okay, we didn't get it this year, here you're 2% back. No, no, you committed to it. But again, that's what I don't want to put on another council. Thank you, Mr. Boudreaux. I disagree with you. Um, and, and one of the, the reasons why I disagree with you, you said it'd be out of whack in three years. But the fire department's mandated 2% every time. So, somehow some way at least we have some type of revenue or, or a mechanism that allows it to go or not go so the out of whack for three years we have to by, by the fire department no sir no sir i'll have the floor but thank you anyway another thing it's not a dog and pony show that i'm doing just because our views may be different doesn't mean that i'm trying whether it be via an ordinance or resolution i'm just stating the way i feel and what i would suggest doing come co-author with me don't just but as far as I don't know if you're referring to me personally or Mr. Nakan who also agreed with me or Mr. Conk who agreed with me but just because we disagree it's not a dog and pony show for us um, I can have an opinion respect the opinion and to me the next thing you're probably going to say is well will you support a tax will you do this I don't know we'll see that's not that's not what's before me and what I'm talking about all I'm saying is I was approached it's up here I don't see why not do it and if the reason was because of the state legislature we just fixed that by doing it by ordinance now it's going to go out of whack in three years but the fire department does the same and has it every every time I for one will support it and still want to go further with an ordinance and would encourage the council if they would like to join me in that ordinance thank you Miss Hayberg uh, make, you, make the mayor's Mike Hunt, okay. Well, you get to speak for him. <laughs> Let's give it a shot. I go a lot. And Chief, you're hot too. So now the conversation's turning. I support this no matter what, whether we do it locally, state level, whatever. I think that the, the police officers and what they do every day, no matter what, we need to make other cuts in order to accommodate their, their pay for what they do. Um, I'm interested to hear mayors, yours opinion on a couple of different things. One being you you guys start with the budget the budget starts with you 
What are your thoughts on a 2% annual pay increase with the conditions, of course? I want to hear y'all's thoughts on that. And then also, also I want to hear what your preference is as far as to bring it, letting it go to the state or us taking it by ordinance locally. So those are two questions I'd like answered <coughs> by you or the mayor if he comes yeah, back I'll, in. And I'll then probably let thing. Joel answer that because those are really important questions. Of I mean, course. Well, the, the ordinance route surely seems um, a, a lot more palatable than going to the state, but uh, let, let's let um, the mayor president talk about filibuster that. until he yeah. gets back. Uh, he'll be, he'll well, be right back. Uh, Chief, I'd like to hear your opinion on ordinance at the local level or taken to the state level. What is your preference? Because when we yes. spoke, with her, this wasn't on the table. Yes, thank you. Uh, you know, the um, going the state route, I think, was sort of a historical thing. We've noticed that other departments in the state have done it. It's where the firemen got theirs in 62 and so on. However, uh, I would like to just say and publicly that you guys, this council and this administration has supported my department 100% all the way down my two in two years and two months, I think, since I've been here. I have no reason to doubt any of you supporting uh, what we're trying to accomplish. And if it means uh, not going to the state and just simply coming to you guys with an ordinance, I would be absolutely content to do that. Okay. All right. Well, I was hoping the mayor would be back <coughs> by now. I'm going to hold off. I'm hoping some other people have questions because this is a question to me that's important that I want to get an answer from the mayor, hopefully before we vote. So if I need to go track them down, I can. Thank you. Councilman Nakia. All right. I'm on the record. I was a fan of Red Flex. I supported the program. Any safety initiative you want to bring, I'm on. I was there from the jump. I always believed in if you can create revenue from people that are breaking the law, whether it's a cop or not, doesn't have discretionary, you know, it was making money. Where, where that program's at today? I know we took a hit, almost a $3 million hit, probably in one of the budgets, you know? So nobody needs to challenge me as far as for where I'm at on public safety or put a revenue generating program on people that are breaking the law. I ask for speed vans in my neighborhood. They don't go in the parish. Okay, so this ain't no fairy tale for me. <laughs> this ain't no kumbaya. I believe in police. I believe in fire. I believe in what's right and what's fair. The difference is the fire department is given that. We don't have an option to not give them their pay if the revenue's not there. This one does. Okay. I'm advocate far. You know that. I stood up for a tax to protect the unincorporated area. I'm also support the men in blue. I support red flex. I said to someone the minute that that program leaves, one, the sad thing is it should have been called the revenue generating program from the last administration when they put it out there because that's what it did. So we should just tell the public we need money for police to get them where they need and we're going to implement this program that's going to raise revenue for speeding offenders, speeding in a school zone, running stop signs. I'm in. Because to me, if you're breaking the law and you can capture revenue, now here's the, t here's the million dollar question, how are you going to get them to pay and how are we going to get that? That's a big legal mumbo jumbo. Oh, we're going to fine them. Oh, we're going to uh, you know, put a lien on them. You know? So with all due respect, <laughs> I'm all about making sure we take care of the men in blue and the men in red. And if there is a true, and we come to the public and say, we're going to create a revenue generating revenue system to fund the necessary salaries that are needed to keep people wanting to come to work for you and to feel those so we're not overworking our men and so we can have the best, safest community, sign me up. But bring me a program, bring me a program that's going to do that. And I'm not talking two years from now, three years from now. If y'all want to table this, you want to do what you got. I'm, I like it as it is because of the fact is it is different. The fire department gets it all the time. We're asking these to say if it's there, give it. If it's not, it's not there. And if you want to give your employees a raise of 2%, you're not subject to give them another two on top of that. You know, so... 
Whichever way y'all want to go, I'm fine with. You want to go ordinance? Let's go ordinance. The rest of this council feels like we need to take it down and regroup and come back with something that everybody can agree on. I'm okay with that too. But I'm also okay with supporting a revenue generating safety program in the city of Lafayette, if that's what it takes. So someone can put it up on the table. I'm one of nine. You heard me tonight. Councilman Terrio. Mr. Duyon, he's going to be coming back in a little bit. Just a, a quick question. Um, I agree, and I'm okay with bringing this as an ordinance. Chief, you said you were okay with that. Keep it at a local level. Let's do that. I'm fine with that. And keep it as is. See, the caveat is, is that Ms. Toops, you and I were talking earlier, and it just hit me, is that even if we go three years, or if the police goes three years without a trigger, on the two percent based on the ordinance as what you said earlier if the funding or some funding is there available even though the trigger on the ordinance is not there there's still a possibility that the the current governing body whatever council is at that point can still provide them a two percent across the board raise or get some type of raise across the board uh, if it was approved by the council so so there would be the caveat. You heard me asking you that earlier, Chief? Is that, remember I said there might be three years before the, you know, yes, sir. sales tax revenue. So you guys might still be able to get a raise. Uh, it may not be the two, it might be one, it might be one and a half, or it could be more, you never know. But if the trigger's not there, although then I guess the second question would be, how would you given, be given raises if the trigger's not hit? But that's happened before. It happened this very year. Yes, it did. With That's why I'm five. bringing it up. So there is that possibility, too. Now, I think I'd agree with uh, the, the other council members that we need to do this by, uh, by ordinance. And, uh, Chief, when the time comes, I'll make a, make a motion to uh, defer this indefinitely. Do you have any problem with that? No, I don't. I'm doing it now. Make a motion to defer indefinitely uh, legal. We just need to take the verbiage here, put it in ordinance form. I have a motion by Councilman Terrio to defer a second by indefinitely to, and a second by Councilman Cole. Are you finished, Mr. I'm Terrio? finished. Councilman Cole, you have the floor. The reason why I was so quick to second that motion by Mr. Terrio, which again is rather a unprecedented uh, we defer it give us some time to look at this issue and if we have the commit the political commitment and the political courage to address it locally we'll do it and I think based on what we've heard tonight that commitment is there now we just have to display some courage to move it forward councilman Castillo thank you sir I've been quiet on this issue all night listen to y'all go back and forth um, not all firefighters are required to get 2%. Uh, you got to complete three years to be eligible for it, and it only lasts for 20 years, and after that, you, you don't get it again. Um, you're not mandated to get it. That's just a little bit of information for everybody. But I like the talk. Everybody loves fire and police. Where you been the last 11 years? <laughs> I mean, Mr. Boudreaux had a great idea. Let's go they're all together, and I'm going to say it, public safety tax. Ooh, look, the roof didn't fall, okay? I've been advocating for that for years. That's how you fix this problem. You can't depend on Baton Rouge, you know that. And we can't depend on our budget, on our sales tax, because it's up and down. The, the police department is going to suffer, even with the ordinance. These guys are going to suffer. So if we're going to do it right, not put a Band-Aid on it, like Mr. Boudreaux said. Let's go out and do it. I'll lead the pack, no doubt. Public safety tax is the way to go to cure this problem, to cure his problem for retention, to cure the fire chief's problem for retention, and for the future of both departments. Gives your general fund a break because they'll have their funding source. Simple, easy solution. Now, I want to see nine votes on that. 
¿Qué? No vale nada. But we'll see, but we're going to pass a resolution that really and truly doesn't mean anything. That's going to, the state's going to control it again, or try to control it, if we can get it through there. Let's, let's do the right thing. Let's step up to the plate and go for it. The ordinance, the ordinance is good. But it only fixes it for a little while. Let's put, it, let's put the package together and go, like Mr. Nakan said. Let's do the right thing by both departments. Okay? Because tonight I heard a little bit of back and forth, fire and police, fire and police. Don't pit them against each other. They protect us. So we need to, as a body, do the right thing by both departments. <coughs> police department needs more money. Fire department needs more money. Political courage, there it is, right there. Step up to the plate. Put a package together, bring it to the public. Let them, let them decide what's important. Okay? Thank you. Thank you, sir. Ms. Williams, any blue cards on the deferral indefinitely? We had two citizens sign in who did not wish to speak, who signed in to support the resolution. We do have one speaker, Dorian Brannan. Um, no, sir, you cannot. Um, anybody, any other speakers? No, sir. Please follow for the vote on the deferral. District 4? Yes. 5? Yes. District 6? Yes. District 7? Yes. District 8? Yes. District 9? Yes. District 1? Yes. District 2? Yes. District 3? Yes. The motion to defer indefinitely is approved. Mr. Chairman, may I say something? Yes, sir. Just wanted to say thank you for all of the discussion tonight. I appreciate all of the hard work you guys do. I appreciate what y'all do for my department, and I will be contacting you all individually so we can start working as soon as possible. Thank you. Thank and, you. And just for clarification, the reason why no one can speak for someone else's card that's filled out, because then anyone could do that, and I'd have to do that at every meeting. So that was just rules and procedure, just so the public knows. Cindy, please read. Resolution 17 2019, a resolution of the Lafayette City Parish Council releasing the Louisiana Office of the State Fire Marshal from responsibility or liability for those inspections performed by the Fire Prevention Bureau or the consequences thereof within the jurisdiction of the governing authority. Who is it? Uh, Councilman Castile. The motion second by Councilman Notcamp. Any council discussion? Councilman Terrio. One quick question on here is that um, <laughs> it was posed to me, and, and maybe Mr. Castile or, or somebody from the fire department has this here. Is the chief here? I know he was here earlier. Maybe he walked out. But um, it says here that the fire marshal, uh, you know, it, it, uh, releasing the fire marshal from responsibility or library for, for inspections performed basically by the fire marshal. So why would we need a resolution? to have them from, you know, releasing them from liability, from inspections that they perform. Any, uh, I don't know, do uh, we have anybody to speak on that? Perhaps Mr. Uh, Swartzendruber can answer that. Go ahead and uh, introduce yourself to the chair and everybody and then uh, give us a heads up on it. Sure, Todd Swartzendruber, Assistant City Parish Attorney. I was working with the chief on the ordinance on this at, past, at the last meeting. And this resolution, the Fire Prevention Bureau is the Lafayette Fire Department. Right. So this is a requirement of the state fire marshal that Lafayette is, is uh, indemnifying the state fire marshal. Okay. I see where you're coming so from. It's, we're indemnifying the state. Got you. Okay. But that explains it. Okay. Very good. Thank you. That's all I have. Thank you. Seeing no other council discussion, Ms. Williams, any blue card? Yes, sir. Please call for the vote. District 5? Yes. District 6? Yes. District 7? Yes. District 8? Yes. District 9? Yes. District 1? Yes. District 2? Yes. District 3? Yes. District 4? Yes. The motion is approved. Resolution 18, 2019, a resolution of the Lafayette City Parish Council granting a waiver of an exemption from the requirements of Section 6-36A1 of the Lafayette City Parish Consolidated Government Code of Ordinances 
relative to the holding of an alcohol beverage license at the premises of Carpe Diem Cafe and Wine Bar establishment to be operated at 812 Jefferson Street in the city of Lafayette, Louisiana. I have a motion by Councilman Lewis, second by Councilman Conk. Seeing no council discussion, Ms. Williams, any blue cards? Liz Payne signed in if you have questions. Not seeing any questions from any council members. Can you please call for the vote? District 6? Yes. District 7? Yes. District 8? Yes. District 9? Yes. District 1? Yes. 2? Yes. District 3? District 4? District 5? Yes. The motion is approved. Hey, Liz, can you hold up one second? Um, Councilwoman Ms. Liz Aysbear asked us to go back just for a question for Mr. Robodeau. Mr. Robodeau, we're going back. Your mic is hot. Ms. Aysbear had a question for you. Go ahead, Ms. Aysbear. Mayor, I wanted because uh, I wanted to get your opinion real quick. We we were whenever we were discussing the ordinance. I'm sorry, the resolution for the uh, police department increase for two percent. We were discussing going back and forth between going to the state level or keeping it local and by ordinance. And I wanted to pick your brain on two things. Uh, I did try and cover this by Lowell, but he wanted to have your opinion because it was something so serious. Is I wanted to hear, as someone who's the first point of contact for the budget every year, what, were you, what was your thoughts on having a 2% increase every year, of course, depending on sales tax. But then also my second question was, what's your preference? Would you prefer to keep it local or would you prefer to have it go to the state? We did, just so you know, we did defer it okay. indefinitely to keep the conversation going. Okay. Um, I think the important thing is, is, is that we send a message of some level of commitment to our officers. I think if you go to the state, it's a stronger commitment because you're saying, hey, in order to change it, you're not only going to have to get your local folks to lobby your legislative delegation, um, it just adds to the number of people that you would have to get on board to get rid of it okay. locally though I think it makes perfect sense that you know it stays with the council so I, I think the ordinance is, a, is a, a certainly a reasonable solution and one that still sends uh, the message to the officers uh, that there's a commitment there and that we want it to be fixed we want it to be something that you know you're getting so when when our administration of all of the forces is trying to recruit it's a it's a you know a tool in their toolbox that uh, Will allow them. Certainly, the trigger. I, I appreciate their effort to put in the trigger. Um, the more I think about it, uh, it should probably be a revenue trigger as opposed to a sales tax trigger. Let's look at the revenue in total because you could have sales tax that may not quite make it, but it was an assessment year and property taxes went out the roof. But, mm -hmm. but again, any year that the council wants to give a raise. Um, is a year that the officers are going to get the raise even if revenues went down uh, so um, this was just that in the event that there was revenue increases that the first commitment to what that some of that money was going to be spent on was to provide for the law enforcement raises so I think I answered your two questions somewhere you, you answered you definitely answered the I love your suggestion of the revenue trigger rather than sales tax but you said you like both the local and the state but which one would you prefer well, um, well it, it's, that's a tough one. Uh, I, I, I can understand why you would want to put it at the state level just because it's telling the officers, hey, a lot of folks, right. it's going to take a lot of effort and a lot of folks to undo it. Sure. Um, but that's, that, that in no way suggests that if, if an ordinance is passed, that it's going to be easy for a future council to say, hey, we're taking away this, this guaranteed raise that we've given you. I mean, that's a hard lift for future councils to make, too. So they're both really strong commitments to the law enforcement community. Uh, you would pick which one? Um, either one. I mean, I, I think they're both good. Um, but you would pick. If you're going to pick either one, we got to move forward. I just reopened it, so uh, let's go. I, I would, Please, I would, with all due respect. Yeah, I would beg you to, to choose one of them. Yep. Uh, I think ordinance is probably a better policy decision. There we go. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Just to end the conversation. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Let's move on to reports and discussion items. Read number 13. 
Proposed Library Millage Fund Rededication. Okay, this is on here. Um, basically, last time uh, Mr. Castile had tabled the ordinance for the rededication of the millage fund, we decided instead of doing a council liaison team, for lack of a better word, if there was any questions any council members had, we could do it in an open meeting setting. So I'll open it up to any council members. Seeing no discussion from the council on this, any blue cards, Ms. Williams? Two citizens who did not wish to speak opposed the library rededication. We do have uh, four speakers signed in, the first of which is Teresa Elberson. She passes. Andrew, do y'all, if necessary, not necessary, Nora Stelly, if necessary. I'm Nora Stelly. I'm president of the Board of Control for the library, and I thank you for giving me an opportunity to talk to you briefly tonight. I promise it's brief. I know that there is no vote tonight, and the matter is not officially before you, but I thank you for the opportunity to have a brief discussion and comment with you, because the last time I was here in January, we didn't get to do that. And the discussion that was had about the library dedication kind of ended with a bang and, uh, and a big surprise. And there was a, a suggestion, I inferred a suggestion, that somehow the library system came by the large fund balance it has by fooling taxpayers, by duping someone, or by otherwise misrepresenting itself and its goals to get where it got. And of course, we know where the library is today. We, there's no secret, we have a big pot of money. And so we walked out, many of us, some of you, because you expressed your own confusion, not exactly understanding what had been said, not exactly understanding where we stood from there. And uh, as the president of the Board of Trustees, I walked out pretty disheartened because uh, I felt that some, there was a mic drop there and we hadn't had an opportunity to respond. So it's a late night, but I do want to take just a few minutes to tell you a story, and I'll go as fast as I can. In 1897, the Women's Literary Club of Lafayette established a fund for a lending library. They started with 50 books. In 1930, another predominantly female club, Levant Cot, expanded on that effort and the library, the little library, grew to a little bigger library. In 1942, the Louisiana Municipal Library was founded by the state here as a demonstration library. It's the first time that it was officially recognized by the state as a library, and it was pretty cutting edge for Lafayette to be that location. By 1953, Lafayette Parish had nine branches and a bookmobile. Again, pretty cutting edge for 1953. By 1963, there were 10 branch locations and a bookmobile and the first standalone library at Lee and Maine. In the early 70s, the first new modern public library was built at West Congress. And as time went on, other libraries were built and other groups were, became interested in the library and formed to support its efforts, the Library Foundation and the Friends of the Library. By 1996, the library was really at the head of, at the, head of the pack. It had an online public access catalog. There was no longer a card catalog. Again, a pretty big deal in, at the time. And by 1998, there was free public access computing at all of the Lafayette Library locations. That takes us to about 2000 to 2002. And Lafayette was on the grow, and the library was on the grow, and again, it was on the cutting edge of everything, but it had no money, and it needed space, and it needed services. And so the Board of Trustees hired consultants and demographic experts and learned from those experts that what Lafayette really needed was five 
big, bad, beautiful libraries with everything libraries could have. And that board of trustees had the vision and the tenacity to come before the council and the mayor and say, this is what we want to do. And we want to do it to the tune of $40 million. Again, really shocking for the early 2000s. The mayor opposed it. The council didn't like the idea. It wasn't even easy to get before the council on the agenda, and certainly not easy to get before the voters. But that board did it. And they went door to door, and they went to every civic and social club that would listen to them, and they explained what the vision was. And by George, the voters saw it. They saw the vision, and they bought it. And they knew exactly what they were getting, and they knew exactly what they were doing. Nobody cheated. Nobody lied. Nobody was a ghost. And it's all very clear. And I would suggest to you that the letter you received on February 5th, I believe, from Blaise Saunier, the board president at that time, tells the whole story. And I would encourage you to read it if you haven't already. Thank you. Ms. Williams, next speaker. Final speaker, Lydia Romero. Hello, my name is Lydia Romero. I'm uh, from District 2. I'm against a millage rededication due to a couple of facts. Um, I have a large family, and not every penny, but every millage counts. And in addition, the library director and the library board of control over the course of recent months have shown their disregard for our representative form of government. and what the proper use of public funds is. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Any other speakers? Yes, sir. Please read reports and discussion items number 14. Update on the Buchanan Street parking garage. I will now give the floor to Mr. Castillo. Mr. Castillo, your mic's hot. Okay. Um, Ms. Bro, and yeah, real quick update. It's late. I have 30 seconds. We just got a one slider up here for you. Um, Danielle Rowe with Development and Planning. Um, good evening, Council Members. Um, we wanted to, we're excited to update you on an RFP, a request for proposal, that will be going out tomorrow afternoon for the Buchanan Redevelopment Site. Um, we are inviting uh, offers to propose any financial offer that in the opinion of the offer will best suit the redevelopment of the Buchanan redevelopment site. The Buchanan redevelopment site consists of four parcels depicted in the red boundary on the slide, approximately totaling approximately 1.2 acres in the heart of downtown Lafayette with frontage along Jefferson Street to the east, West Convent Street to the south, and South Buchanan to the west. The parcels are comprised of the closed Buchanan garage, which spans parcels A and B um, on the slide and is owned by the parish. Parcel C, a surface parking lot with approximately 30 parking spaces that is owned by the city. And parcel D, a surface parking lot with approximately 45 spaces that is owned by the parish. LCG envisions the Buchanan redevelopment site as an opportunity to enhance the value of the site while meeting the following goals. To reposition the Buchanan site as a viable asset, redevelopment, re, excuse me, redevelop the Buchanan redevelopment site to its highest and best use, um, provide a lucrative financial return to LCG, deliver the, a redevelopment that recognizes the current best planning practices, supports the downtown vision of a vibrant, walkable, mixed-use center of, commercial, of commerce attracting employers, residents, tourists, and shoppers, provide 265 parking spaces to be dedicated exclusively for LCG use and or assignment, restore and relocate the um, Robert Dafford mural, and contribute to the vitality of Jefferson and Buchanan Streets, downtown Lafayette, and greater Lafayette Parish. The intent of the RFP is to seek out proposals for what the market can bear for the redevelopment site while placing limited requirements on offers, thus allowing offers the flexibility pro to propose redevelopment that may include residential housing, hotel, retail, office use, or a combination of, the, of some of these. 
in addition to LCG's parking requirement. And due to the LCG parking requirement, offers have an opportunity to propose a redevelopment with no height restriction. It is important to note that this redevelopment site is located within an opportunity zone, the downtown development district, and allows the availability for offers to stack multiple incentives depending on the proposed redevelopment. We're excited about the opportunity to continue to revitalize and transform our downtown with the redevelopment that also supports our local economy. The RFP will be issued tomorrow afternoon on LCG's website and proposals will be due to LCG on June 14th. Once the RFP is posted, we will send the link out to the council members, DDA, One Acadiana, LIDA, Louisiana LED, as well as to others um, with that are, are uh, excuse me, local, regional, and national interested parties. Okay, well, like the discussion you and I had, um, my main concern was trying to get that garage either fixed, open, or something. Uh, this process y'all gonna be taking, uh, it's a 90 day process for the RFPs. Um, I know y'all trying to develop the whole, that whole parcel. Um, y'all have a time frame on, on if we do get someone to come in and, and, and do an RFP and, and we accept it. Is there a time frame on doing something with the parking garage, or is it nothing's really in stone yet? Just kind of the RFP is to seek ideas. developers for the entire parcel, um, and then from June when we get the uh, proposals in, we would go into negotiation with the intent of being able to get somebody in place to start work on it in 2020. Okay, why, why did you pick 90 days? It's a request for proposals, so it's more extensive than an RFQ, which is a request for qualifications. This is asking developers to provide pro formas, actual concepts of what they're developing, so we have a more thorough um, package and proposal to review and evaluate. Yeah, that's what I want you to say. <laughs> okay, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Seeing no other council conversation. No Any? speakers. Go ahead. No, no speakers. speakers. Let's move to ordinance for final adoption. Cindy, please read. Ordinance 12, 2019, an ordinance of the Lafayette City Parish Council, authorizing the Lafayette City Parish Consolidated Government to sell at an internet auction miscellaneous surplus LCG LUS movable property, which are no longer needed for public purposes as per the attached list auction. Motion by Councilman Terrio, second by Councilwoman Nanette Cook. Any council discussion? Seeing none, any blue cards? No, sir. Please call for the vote. District 7? Yes. District 8? Yes. District 9? Yes. District 1? District 2? Yes. District 3? Yes. District 4? Yes. District 5? Yes. District 6? The motion is approved. Ordinance 15 2019, an ordinance of the Lafayette City Parish Council authorizing the Lafayette City Parish Consolidated Government to sell at an internet auction miscellaneous surplus LCG movable property, which is no longer needed for public purposes as per the attached list auction. Motion by Councilman Terrio, second by Councilwoman Cook. Seeing no council discussion, Ms. Williams, any blue or public comment cards? No, sir. Please call for the vote. District 8? District 9? Yes. District 1? District 2? Yes. District 3? Yes. District 4? Yes. District 5? Yes. District 6? District 7? The motion is approved. Ordinance 16, 2019, an ordinance of the Lafayette City Parish Council authorizing the Lafayette City Parish Consolidated Government to sell at an internet auction miscellaneous surplus LCG movable property, which is no longer needed for public purposes as per the attached list auction. A motion by Councilman Castile. Second by Councilman Conk. Seeing no council discussion, Ms. Williams, any public comment cards? No, sir. Please call for the vote. District 9? Yes. District 1? Yes. District 2? Yes. District 3? Yes. District 4? Yes. District 5? Yes. District 6? Yes. District 7? Yes. District 8? Yes. The motion is approved. I'd like to remind everyone that item number 18 has been deferred indefinitely. Cindy, please read item 19. 
Ordinance 26 2019, an ordinance of the Lafayette City Parish Council enacting Article 6 of Chapter 78 of the Lafayette City Parish Consolidated Government Code of Ordinances to provide for regulation of wireless communications facilities within the right within the rights of way owned by the City of Lafayette, the Parish of Lafayette, or Lafayette City Parish Consolidated Government. Need a motion by Councilman Boudreau, second by Councilman Lewis. I'd like to remind everyone that there is a proposed amendment to substitute a revised ordinance as prepared by legal. I have Councilman Boudreau open the motion on that amendment. Council Councilman Castillo is the second on the proposed amendment. Council discussion on the amendment. Councilman Boudreau. Yes, um, I would like Mr. Avery to come forward, please. Uh, members, I would like to afford Mr. Avery an opportunity to share uh, prior to the meeting as he was working up um, some of his final preparations. Um, there was an um, uh, uh, error, I guess, or, or something identified uh, that he opines is in conflict with the FCC rules that regulates this, and I would like him to just share it at this time, and that would be necessary to offer as an additional amendment. Sure. In, in addition to the amendments that are, are, were just placed on the floor, there is a typo and then an, a, another amendment that Mr. Boudreau just alluded to there. There's a, a cubic foot requirement for certain radio equipment that was less than what the FCC order said was, was permissible. So um, I would recommend the following additional amendments to what you just put on the floor. First of all, and I think uh, uh, V is distributing those amendments to you now. Um, in section 78330B, the fourth line, there's a typo. It has the word. 50 and then it has $20 in parentheses per year per poll. That should be the word 20, 20 with $20 in parentheses, $20 per year per poll. Um, and then the other two have to do with the FCC issue that Mr. Bujo just described. In section 78326B6 on line three, and I'll go ahead and read the next one too because it's the same thing. Section 78326B14. Both of those sections, there's a reference to 11 cubic feet. That should be 28 cubic feet in both of those uh, sections. Well, Lord, I offer these items as an amendment as well. I need a second. Second. A second on, on Mr. Castile. Um, just to clear it up, is it possible, Mr. Abair, we can put these into one amendment, or is it we're going to? You could incorporate it into a single one if that was the wish of the right. council. And they the are the original point. motion for the original amendment, and he's the original second, so they yeah. can incorporate. Yes. Is that good with you, Mr. Boudreau? It is fine. And Mr. Castillo. Thank you. So um, with that said, Mr. Chairman, as it relates to these amendments, I certainly uh, recommend support and approval of these. Um, as I have spoken to a couple of you individually who have inquired, uh, this particular ordinance um, is something that has been worked on by legal for quite some time now. Um, we have looked into this matter for well over a year. Um, I think it's important that everyone knows and realizes that um, FCC policy and, and rules um, are such that uh, small cell deployment is available today and that if someone was to submit for a permit that we would have to deal with that without an ordinance so having an ordinance in place actually puts lcg in a better position and protects us to a greater degree so with that said i would ask that we uh, adopt these amendments and then move into the body of the ordinance in general thank you sir Councilwoman Abair. I support this amendment, uh, but Councilman Boudreau, can you maybe uh, point out somewhere on here? I know that like specifically Mr. Uh, Conk and I, especially with working in AT&T and them laying fiber, we've had a lot of issues with them breaking water lines, sewer line, electrical lines, gas lines in our districts. And I imagine some of you have had the same issues, but he and I have mostly spoken about it 
on um, at LPUA. Is this, in what it comes down to, is them saying them not giving the uh, 811 enough time for everyone to go mark, and so they were cutting lines, just going ahead and digging the contractors were. Is there anything in here that will protect us from those issues happening whenever they move on to this project, moving too quickly and making errors? As it relates, there's a lot of information in the, in the oh. ordinance in general as it relates to the permitting process, and Mike could certainly chime in. But there is some significant, un unlike, mm -hmm. as, I, as I appreciate it, unlike other infrastructure deployment within our right-of-ways as it relates to agreements um, with these types of um, um, third-party companies and whatnot, the, uh, the permitting process I find to be uh, much more extensive and intensive. Um, some of the recommendations I think are greater than anything that is in place today. And the majority of this product, um, although there is some burying that takes place, especially when it comes to power sources, the facilities themselves um, for the most part are airborne, if you would. But um, I would say yes. Um, and, and again, Mike could chime in as someone who's actually really in depth with it. I would say to your question, yes, there are more protections and more um, measures to prevent those types of things from happening than what we have in place today with our regular um, um, deployment of these type of services. Okay. I would just add that the, the one call law is not affected by this ordinance at all. It's still fully enforceable in the same manner that it would be whether this ordinance existed or not. So they still have the same obligations under the Louisiana One Call Law that before and after this one. Right. And they were following the One Call, but they were putting in so many requests that Slimco and LUS and those such companies couldn't keep up. They couldn't spray the lines fast enough. Right. So that's, I guess, my concern is I don't want this happening again. And I know we're not digging nearly as many as what we were before, but what other issues may arise is, you know, more outages. They're, they're working still on some sort of electrical grid and some sort of pole. And there's a lot of existing poles here. I just want to make sure that we are covered and protected when we start getting calls from constituents about power outages and they're up there again and they're, you know, uh, busting electrical lines, power lines, water lines, sewer lines. If they indeed do, deed, uh, do indeed, indeed dig, I uh, just want to see if we're better prepared because I know Councilman Boudreaux was very careful for that, especially on the aesthetic, making it aesthetically pleasing. So I just wanted to see if there was anything that you can mention in addition to what all these red lines added. So I guess you answered my question. Yep. Hope so. Hope Thank so. You. We'll see. Thank you. Councilman Terrio. Mr. Abear, if you don't mind, please give those here and those watching a brief overview of what exactly this ordinance does. Certainly. The, um, in uh, September of, I think it was September of, of last year, the FCC, um, after a lot of discussion and, and deliberation, uh, issued an order um, which fairly, you know, severely regulated and limited the ability of local government to uh, regulate um, so-called small cell uh, deployments or distributed antenna systems, which is um, the the theory is that in order to facilitate the, the deployment of, of, of so-called 5G service, that instead of a, a few large cell towers, that there will be a larger number of smaller communications facilities laid out over um, a wider area. So in order to um, accommodate that, the FCC thought it was important to provide certain restrictions on what local government could do and in terms of regulating those, those facilities. That order became effective in January of this year. And so, as I think Mr. Boudreau pointed out a minute ago, you know, in the, in the absence of having an ordinance like this, we would still be presented with this issue and still have to figure out some kind of a way to deal with this. So the idea behind this ordinance and, and you know, every municipality in America is, is dealing with this in some fashion right now. Um, the idea is to attempt to establish a comprehensive set of regulations that allow for regulation to the extent that the FCC will allow it 
because in the absence of that, then uh, there may either be no regulation or we may be subject to some kind of legal exposure for claiming that we've exceeded the confines of what the FCC allows us to do. So that's the purpose of this. It regulates um, primarily um, new, new deployments um, on, on new poles, but it also regulates how uh, these things could attach to the poles of others. It applies mostly to our regulation of, our, of rights of way that we own. And um, there it, it does not apply to things like requests to attach to our buildings or things like that. Okay, let me ask you this. You mentioned like a request to attach to a certain poles in our right of way, but out in the parish we have Slimco and Energy and other things that are in the right of way on the poles there. So we're gonna create legislation that says what can be attached to their poles? It's, it does, doesn't have to do with so much what can be attached to their poles. It has to do with what can be placed in the right-of-way. What can be placed and, in the right-of-way. Yes. So this, but. They again, would have to have the, go ahead, sorry. You do have, you know, your words were attached to poles, and some things are in dealing with the 5G and that. So, I mean, are we able to do that? Well, LCG owns some poles. LCG owns utility poles. LCG owns uh, light, light poles, mm -hmm. uh, certain other kinds of poles. So, you know, and. Uh, that's more what I was talking about when you talk about out in the in the I'm rural area where there's a Slimco pole then Inter they're gonna have to have yeah. their own agreement with Slimco um, and they're gonna have to have permission to be in that right-of-way but whether it be a parish right-of-way or a state right-of-way they'd have to have both of those permissions in order to be there okay but with this here We're regulating wireless communications facilities within, within the rights of way owned by the city of Lafayette and the parish of Lafayette or the Lafayette City Parish Consolidated Government. Correct. So all of them, so. Correct. That sounds like all throughout Lafayette Parish other than maybe the other municipalities, is that correct? Everywhere there's either a city right of way or a parish right of way or we put in Lafayette City Parish Consolidated Government just to avoid all doubt um, then Yes, it regulates the access to those rights of ways by wireless communications providers. But the things that would be excluded would be like a state right of way or a, 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 the right of way of another municipality other than the city of Lafayette. Okay, that's all I have for now. Thank you. Councilman Call. I've struggled with this particular ordinance because of some issues dealing with the bureaucratic process. And Mr. Uh, Boudreau and I have communicated back and forth, and it's somewhat related to what Ms. Hebert mentioned earlier. We are not in a position currently to address the application process in an expeditious fashion. And the reason I say that, if we look at the restrictive deadlines that are placed on the city responding to applications, we have a set per a time period that we have to meet and then actually apply whatever permission is needed for the for the uh, permit i'm concerned about that but i understand that we are operating under the uh, an fcc mandate and i also share with mr boudreau the frustration of not having done anything prior to this time so i i'm going to vote for this i'm not comfortable with it i think it certainly falls upon the administration to implement immediately some process of review and it could, according to the ordinance, include a third-party contractor. Am I correct, Mr. Boudreau? Yes. Or sorry, Mr. Abair? I'm, I'm sorry, wrote not it, Mr. Yes. Boudreau. Yeah. Mr. Boudreau, sorry, my yes. Thought, speak on my behalf. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It, 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 it does, and the, and, and, well, let me just ask Mike, maybe explain um, the third-party process or the review uh, process that LCG is currently putting together to address this exact thing. The, so. the FCC allowed for the possibility of re recognizing that a lot of local governments don't have either the, the number of personnel or the, the number of, of personnel with this, this kind of skill set to evaluate these applications within the deadlines that they specify. So they allow for local governments to hire a third party contractor and also some limited capacity for the local governments to recover the cost of that contractor from the applicant. Um, so that's out there. 
um, and that is certainly something that's being considered here. In the meantime, uh, we've had a number of meetings and discussions about the processes that will be necessary to, you know, timely uh, evaluate uh, small cell applications. It's going to require a level of coordination between a number of departments that is not, you know, we don't currently need for most other things, particularly uh, the Public Works Department, the Department of Development and Planning, the Finance Department, and the Legal Department. Um, and, um, you know, those things are all under discussion. And, you know, those processes are, are you know, frankly, still being established. I mean, your point's well taken. And um, it's been, I will say that the issue of how exactly to comply with the FCC mandate on that level, on the street level and the application level has been something of a moving target. And, you know, not that it makes it any, any better for us as opposed to anybody else, but there, as I said a minute ago, you know, municipalities all over the country are struggling with this very issue right now. And there are 80 municipalities across the country who are actually taking the FCC regs to court. Yes. Uh, one just very, Mr. Boudreau and I had actually, I had suggested to him, and he, I think he bought into it, and then we found out legally we can't do it, was to, <laughs> <laughs> minor, minor details, uh, <laughs> is to put a 90-day uh, delay on the implementation of the process so that we would have time to put in play the bureaucratic process. Yeah, moratoria and things like that are things that the FCC very specifically said we, we you know, local governments cannot do. You know, we talk about state mandates. <laughs> this is worse. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Seeing no other council discussion, Ms. Williams, public comment on the amendment. No one signed in to speak. Please yes. call the vote on the amendment. District 1. District 2. District 3. Yes. District 4. Yes. District 5. Yes. District 6. Yes. District 7. Yes. District 8. Yes. District 9. Yes. The motion to amend is approved. District 1. Any council discussion on the ordinance as amended? Seeing none, Ms. Williams, any public comment on the amendment? No, sir. Please call for the vote. One. Yes. District two. Yes. District three. Yes. District four. Yes. District five. Yes. District six. Yes. District seven. District eight. District nine. Yes. The motion to adopt the ordinance as amended is approved. Please read item number 20. Ordinance 27 2019, an ordinance of the Lafayette City Parish Council amending the Unified Development Code so as to reclassify the property of Lewis and Cheryl Perrette, case number ZON 2019 0001 121 Kareen Street rezoning, located generally south of West Congress Street, west of Kareen Street, and north of Roslyn Street. The particular parcels being rezoned from residential single-family to mixed-use neighborhood with a conditional use permit for a dwelling single-family detached. Motion by Councilman Conk. Second by Councilwoman Cook. Seeing no council discussion, Ms. Williams, any public comment? One speaker, Lewis Perrette, if need, if questions. Seeing no council uh, questions, call for the vote. District 2? Yes. District 3? Yes. District 4? Yes. District 5? Yes. District 6? Yes. District 7? Yes. District 8? Yes. District 9? Yes. District 1? The motion is approved. Please read item number 21. Ordinance 28-2019, an ordinance of the Lafayette City Parish Council amending the Unified Development Code so as to reclassify the property of Lafayette Huma Habitat for Humanity, Incorporated, case number ZON 2019 0002 314th Street rezoning, located generally south of 14th Tr Street, east of Plum Street, and north of 16th Street. The particular parcel being rezoned from residential single family to mixed use neighborhood conditional use permit conditional, allowing a dwelling single family detached use. A motion by Councilwoman Conk. I'm sorry, Councilwoman <laughs> Cook. Who is the second on this side? Second by Council. It's getting late. Councilman Boudreaux. Seeing no council discussion, any blue cards? No, sir. Please call for the vote. District 3. 
District 4? Yes. District 5? Yes. District 6? Yes. District 7? Yes. District 8? Yes. District 9? Yes. District 1? Yes. District 2? The motion is approved. Please read item number 22. Ordinance 29-2019, in ordinance of the Lafayette City Parish Council, amending the Unified Development Code so as to reclassify the property of Destiny Kingdom Properties, LLC, case number ZON 2019 320 West Willow Street, rezoning, located generally north of West Willow Street, west of North Pierce Street, and east of Patterson Street, the particular parcel being rezoned from commercial heavy to Miss mixed use neighborhood with a conditional use permit for a dwelling single family detached motion by councilman lewis second by councilwoman cook seeing no council discussion miss williams any public comments yes sir please call for the vote district four district five yes district six yes district seven yes district eight yes district nine yes. district one yes district two district three the motion is approved. Please read item number 23. Ordinance 30, 2019, an ordinance of the Lafayette City Parish Council amending the Unified Development Code so as to reclassify the property of Sims and Sims Properties, LLC, case number ZON 2019 0004 406 East Simcoe Street, rezoning, located generally north of East 2nd Street, east of North Magnolia Street, and south of East Simcoe Street. The particular parcel being rezoned from commercial heavy to mixed use neighborhood conditional use permit conditional, allowing a dwelling single family detached use. Motion by Councilman Drew Boudreau, second by Councilman Conk. Seeing no council discussion, Ms. Williams, any public comments? No, sir. Call for the vote, please. District 5? Yes. District 6? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Uh, yes. Double vote. Eight. Yes. District nine. Yes. District one. Yes. District two. Yes. District three. Yes. District four. Yes. The motion is approved. Ordinance 31 2019, an ordinance of the Lafayette City Parish Council amending the Unified Development Code so as to reclassify.